I'm on Struggle Street. This next one is probably overkill. Tough times call for extreme measures. So in an effort to feel a little bit less like a blob, here's some tough love. A couple of weeks ago, I got sick. Just one of those regular bugs that are going around. But since then, I've been really unmotivated by food and have some pretty bad food aversions. Food aversions are always a little bit rough but they're particularly hard on carnivore. Let me paint a picture. I don't want to eat eggs, which is funny because a little while ago, I filmed a three day egg fast and quite honestly, I can't even bring myself to edit that video. So that will be out some time in the future. I was doing really well in transitioning to black coffee, but that does not sound good to me right now. I am repulsed by slow cooked meats. The thought of chicken, duck, any organ meats is just no. You get the idea. I'm on Struggle Street. So I had to think about the things that I don't have quite as strong aversions to, and I've put together a bit of a grocery haul. Strictly speaking, some of these things are ketovore as opposed to carnivore, but right now, me feeling the way that I am, I'm not going to fight it. So what do we have? One of the things that I do not have an aversion to currently is steak. So here we've got three T-bone steaks. We've got three packs of Scotch fillet steaks and three packs of oyster blade. The only other meat that I got for myself this week is bacon. So in here is just some streaky bacon from the deli. This next one is probably overkill, but hopefully somebody out there will understand. Tough times call for extreme measures. And I was truly just a little bit curious. To be honest, even butter doesn't sound that fantastic to me right now. So I'm going to give my usual butter a little bit of a break. And I got just a couple of new ones to try. It's my little fat tub. It's basically all of the different kinds of fat that aren't meat that I reach on. How did this little curiosity of mine start? I was very consistently buying a particular kind of butter, but I order online and that one one week was sold out. So they gave me something else instead. That something else tasted better than what I had been having. That led me to kind of think, well, what do other butters taste like? It might sound kind of odd if you first think about it because all of the ingredients are pretty much the same, maybe except for salt. But hear me out. If you think about it, steak is no different. It's just different parts of the same animal. But even those three steaks that I purchased this week, they do taste different. I assume it's kind of the same thing with butter. I mean, there's cultured, uncultured. There's grain fed and grass fed. Salted, unsalted, or even slightly salted. There's organic and there's non-organic. There are cheaper ones and more expensive ones. There's even some flavored ones. There's Australian, Danish, French, Irish. Surely there's some variety in here. If you'd like a video about butter, let me know in the comments because I think that would be quite interesting. All right, let's just quickly go through the ones that I have. These two that I have are Devondale. They're Australian butters. One is salted, one is unsalted. And these were 460 each. This is another Australian one, macro certified organic. It is salted. This one is not from this haul, but in terms of a bit of a butter collection, this one is mainland certified organic unsalted. This one is $4.60 and this one here is $5.50. This is the most expensive one that I have. It was $6.50. It is Danish butter and it's slightly salted. This is a pretty fancy looking one, President Salted Butter. It is French and it was $5.50. This one was a little bit smaller than the others though. Most of these other ones are 250 grams and this one is 200 grams. There's only two kinds of grass-fed butter that I can get in Australia fairly easily. The other one, which I normally buy that I'm giving a bit of a break and, and the all famous Kerrygold. This one is Irish butter. It's $6 and often sold out. So I was only able to, is this one salted? These are often sold out. This is the salted version. I wasn't even able to buy the unsalted this time. Maybe next time. I've also got these two from Western Star. One is cultured and one is uncultured. 
Both are Australian and both are $4.30 each. And these two are flavoured grass-fed butters. One is rosemary and thyme and one is garlic and herb. I may or may not reach for these. Normally we might have some of these sort of thing if my husband and I are both having steak because he isn't a huge fan of steak getting cooked in just the regular butter. So these ones add a little bit more flavor and why not? He cooks steak far better than I do. So I'm not gonna argue if he wants to cook a steak. I was doing really well in transitioning more to black coffees, but since I've been sick, I'm just trying not to argue with myself. And I have been reaching towards cream a little bit more again. So just a tiny bit of pure cream in my coffee sometimes. Before carnivore, I was doing keto and I really liked how I felt in high fat. So I do want to make sure that I continue with incorporating lots of fats and not going too crazy on the proteins. With that in mind, at least for this week or until these are used up, I might reach towards some avocado some days. It's not uncommon for me to be drinking things like soda water or mineral water. I normally opt for these sorts of ones that are plain, unflavored and things like that. And I still got some of these because these are really, really good if you've got food aversions or if you've got a bit of an unsettled stomach in general. So I'm gonna keep having these. I did buy several of these bottles. Again though, in a bit of an effort to keep life interesting, I did purchase some lemon and lime flavored ones. These are still unsweetened they are just, you know, lightly sparkling water with natural flavors. If you watched my Element haul, you might know that I'm a skeptic when it comes to natural flavors. But again, in times like these, I would rather have something like this than, I don't know, juice or soft drink or some other kind of nasty food-like drink substance. These are fine. I'm okay with these for now. The other thing I'm going to incorporate is electrolytes, making sure that they are balanced. This is my go-to, the unflavored. I'll link my review of it below, but I do have this sample pack with some flavors. Again, if you've watched my Element video, you'll also know that I'm not a huge fan of Stevia, but if I'm really struggling one day, you know, I might incorporate one of these that I got from the sample pack. I wanna try them anyway. I'm going to use them up, but it's just when. I'm going to do a what I eat in a day this week. I actually started it this morning. So if you wanna know how I incorporate all of these things, make sure you subscribe so you know when that comes out. It should be next week. I wanna talk a little bit about why I think it's taking me a little bit longer to get over being unwell. The past little while has just been really crazy. It's, it's been quite intense. My stress is up, my sleep is down. I'm eating while working or to be honest, standing in the kitchen. Basically, I'm in a state of constant multitasking and my brain is not switching off. Even my kids realize it. I made this coffee this morning it says, my brain has too many tabs opened. My eldest read this and he's like, Haha, that's always you, mum. Yeah, it's probably also why I was gifted this mug. I'm someone who thrives under pressure, but I know that if I'm not careful, I will burn out. And it's not the best form of self-care or approach to overall wellness. Living in a constant state of stress and not allowing yourself enough time to relax can have really detrimental effects on your health. You probably know that stress weakens your immune system, but did you know that the bulk of your immune system is actually in your gut? If you don't know too much about the whole gut-brain connection or how your gut can impact effectively everything, make sure to check out some of the first videos on my channel. I'll link some of them below. Basically though, I'm not too surprised that my gut is a bit of a mess or that my immune system was impacted and that I got sick. I can see a time soon though where things are going to be back to my normal level of stress. 
far less elevated than what it is now. It will though take a bit more time, probably one to two months to be honest. But that doesn't mean that I can't make an effort to be a little bit more balanced or at least conscious of the choices that I make and attempt to build some more sustainable habits. For example, less mindless eating and kind of just going through the motions. Aside from food and onto better habits more generally, I do work from home a lot, almost every day. And I just don't move as much as I used to or as much as I'd like. So in an effort to feel a little bit less like a blob, I got a standing desk. She's beautiful. It's from Desky. I ordered it on a Saturday and it came on the Tuesday. So it only took a couple of days. So very, very fast. In case anybody is wondering, I did pay for it myself. Have a look at the top though. It is absolutely stunning. There's a couple of different variations to pick from, but this particular one is pheasant wood. It's got built in cable management, clean and tidy environment, definitely lowers stress levels. And I love the cable management in this desk. It definitely helps. I used to have so many cords everywhere. Even my light is plugged into my desk. I do wish that I got the 10 power points as opposed to the eight because I do use every single one, but I'm still very happy. I feel like I'm a bit behind the bandwagon on getting a standing desk, but we're here now. And something else I'm probably lacking in is the cordless accessories. So I know that I probably should get a cordless mouse and a cordless keyboard, but honestly, they're fine. The other thing that for me was a must if I was getting a standing desk was a wobble board. This is the one from Desky. I think it was about $120, $130. Again, none of this stuff is sponsored, but if you are purely curious, I will link it below. So before I mentioned that I don't move as much as I like or as much as I used to. So part of getting this standing desk is just building better habits and being able to move a little bit more. No, it's not a workout. It does not replace a workout, but it certainly helps. I also started wearing my smartwatch again. I have a bit of a love hate relationship with these sorts of things because I love data. I love analyzing data. I love collecting data. So smartwatches for me can be a little bit unsustainably addictive. But again, I'm just trying to consciously be aware, not aiming to hit the goals every day, but just trying to move a little bit more. Even just things like when I do go outside for 15 to 20 minutes, so often I'm still staring at my phone. I'm checking work emails. I'm reading Teams messages. I'm replying to YouTube comments. I'm not taking in the world around me. And that's definitely something that I want to be more conscious of going forward. No one is going to miss the fact that I don't reply to a Teams message for 15 minutes. It's fine. With all that said, when this particularly crazy period is over, I do want to build, you know, workouts and things like that back into my routine because I do think it really helps physically, mentally, you're just so much more emotionally stable, healthier. There's so, so many benefits. And I used to be good with this lately, not so much. And to be completely honest, here's some tough love to myself and for anyone else who might benefit. I've chosen to prioritize other things over working out. If working out was that important to me right now, I truly believe that I would make time for it. And that's the realization. I have not made time for it. My current stressful state is no one else's fault. It is purely a product of my own choices. When it comes down to it, we create our own habits, good ones, bad ones. Creating a habit to work out is hard, but it's our choice whether to do it or not. And you can't rely on external factors to push you. You have to push yourself. So again, apologies for the tough love, but if you want it bad enough, you'll make it work. Some of you might disagree with that and that is fine. With that said, I'm gonna go cook up some steak 
Make sure you subscribe so you know when that What I Eat In A Week video does come out. And I will link the previous one here for you to go and watch now as well. I'll see you over there.